Hey, so welcome back to another uh, module of Let's Figure Out About Arrays, where I'm your host, Professor Fiske, and we're going to go into C-sharp arrays, which are implicitly typed. So let's talk about this. We might not do any code with this one because it, well, actually I will. So never mind. I thought I had a code example, but I don't. So when you write arrays or objects, um, when you write arrays or objects in JavaScript, you don't have to define how big it is. You don't have to um, have everything good to go at that moment in time for how many properties the object needs to have. You can just instantiate it or you can initialize it, my apologies. You cannot do that in C-sharp. You can't do that in Java. So what can you do? Well, let's talk about that. Now, what we're looking at here is an explanation of implicitly typed arrays. You can create an implicitly typed array in which the type of the array instance is inferred from the elements specified in the array initializer. Now, what am I what am I talking about here? What what is what does this even mean? Well, remember when I said that I don't like to use the bar variable when I know what I'm going to get? I literally just said that in the last lecture. And if you didn't hear me, go back and like and subscribe that video, and like and subscribe this video. But either way, if you look at this content, what you will see is if I said bar and I'm using MSDN as a reference here. So if you want to follow along, do so. Var A equals new I. I'm going to MSDN ref. There. Cool, if you needed it. So this is an MSDN reference here. So if I said new array, and I said, you know, and I gave it values. So in this case, 1, 10, 100. See, it's starting to stop being upset about what I'm doing. 1,000. What do I have here? Well, I have a new int array. That's what that is. Now pause the video and let me know if you can figure out why that, how the PC, how does the app, how does Visual Studio know that the, that the, the, the data type of that array is int? Go ahead, pause the video, figure it out. All right, if you figured this out, then you'll know that the reason why the actual application understands that this is an int array is because it has integers inside it. If I just so happened to put in here a string, it's going to start throwing a fit because it's looking at the first few values going, well, those are ints. So this should be an int array, but that's a string. What's going on? Why are you trying to put a string with an, a, a very, uh, an integer into an array of the same Data type. Nope, we only can select one. So we're going to select int 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. These are not doubles, floats, or longs because there's no decimal point. And this is how implicit, uh, this is how an implicitly typed an array looks like. So I can come to cars. As a matter of fact, before I do this, I want you guys to take the time to implicitly type cars if you can. Make it an array which is implicitly typed. So that the program knows it's a jagged array of this format. All right, so if you've paused and you've tried to figure this out, here's a solution. What I actually want to do is I want to remove this. I do not want to determine what cars is. I want my compiler and my at runtime to determine what cars is. So var cars, because I don't really want to determine this. And then down here, what I would actually do is I would do this. Now, there's a problem with this. This is throwing a fit because it cannot initialize an implicitly typed variable with an array initializer. What? If you're a, if I did this, it would shut up. Okay, so I guess you can't do a jagged arrays. You can't implicitly type a jagged array, but you can implicitly type one-dimensional arrays and multi-dimensional arrays. Maybe I learned something today. As a, and so as I've said in all my videos, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, more to follow. Good luck. Have fun. Ciao.